Hi everyone, we're going to go through week one, coordinate geometry, the Cartesian plane for Ecomath 234. So to start off, the Cartesian plane. Well, it's just this grid we see down the bottom. What we've got here is the Cartesian plane, just because it's named after René Descartes, who came up with it, okay? Um, and it's a way to locate a point. Now, I've done a fairly old-fashioned reference here about those of you old enough to know what a grid is, is but any sort of map when we've got some sort of grid system and I don't know which uh, the letters usually run across the top okay I'll believe myself and we've got A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on we might talk about the location B3 we'll come along to B so we'll go down B across 3 and that's what we're talking about with B3 C1 will be here because it's in the C column in the one row okay that's all the Cartesian, Cartesian plane is okay it's also just called the number plane We've all dealt with the number line before. Oh, well, should have. Here's the number line. It's when we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. forever. And minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. forever. Well, this is just two number lines. And two lines make a plane, makes an area. So if I did a number line horizontally and a number line vertically, I'm also going 1, 2, 3, etc. and minus 1, minus 2, etc. You can see I'm forming uh, this down here. I'm forming a Cartesian plane, um, or a number plane, or two number lines. Okay, let's delete that. Uh, so, let's look at this. I've labelled in a few points. Now, just like the one I just did then, it was easy when it was when it said E7, because there was only E um, along here. There are only letters along here. There are only numbers along here. Now we've got numbers along both. So we have to work out which one we're going to look at first. Now, I've always remembered it. You do X and then Y. What we've done is we've labelled the standard number line to be the X, and then the second number line we drew we call Y. So X is always the horizontal number line, and Y is always the vertical number line. And I always think, well, X comes before Y in the uh, alphabet, so the X coordinate comes first. So if I want to talk about this point 1, 3, since it's 1, 3, I know the coordinates in this system are always an X, and then there are Y. The X is 1, so I go horizontally to 1, and then the Y is 3, so I go up to 3. Again, there's all different ways, and you might already see these might be very natural to you, but it's not going to be natural to everybody. You might see what I'm getting at. If not, um, it's like I said, 1 horizontally and 3 vertically. So where do they meet? I come up to 1, I go across to 3. If there's only one spot they meet. Um, another way which relates well to gradient that we're coming to is to think of it as um, that I'm going along one and then up three. So instead of going to one and then along and three and then along, I like to think I go in the x direction. I start at the origin. I go in the x direction one. All right, I'm done. Now I go in the y direction three. All right, and here I am. It's the same thing. I've heard students say you've got to uh, crawl before you can climb. Well, that, if that helps, it's good. You crawl along horizontal things, you climb up vertical things. So that was a crawl of one and a climb of three. So that's one comma three. If we'd written three comma one, then three would be the crawling and one would be the climbing. Three would be the crawling, I'd crawl to three, and one would be the climbing. That must be the point, three comma one. We've also got negatives. If I said, what about uh, minus one comma minus two? Well, the minus 1 is what I do horizontally or crawling, and the minus 2 is what I do vertically. Again, I start at the origin. If I go minus 1 crawling, I go backwards, minus 1. If I go minus 2 climbing, minus 2 climbing would be up, but minus 2 is going to be down. So I went there, and then I went there, and as it's already labelled, I've ended up there. So what if I tried to go for this point? Well, I'd say, how far have I gone horizontally? I've gone minus 4, so the x coordinate's minus 4. How far have I gone vertically? I haven't gone up three, I've gone down three. So that's minus four, minus three. This one here would be horizontally over minus three. But vertically, after I've gone minus three, I've gone up four. So we can have points in all uh, quadrants of this. We're not going to go on with that, but if I occasionally accidentally say quadrants, basic number planes split up into four quadrants. You'll hear in advanced maths I'm talking about quadrant one, two, three, and four. That's just extra nerd info, if I say it. Apologies. Um, and you notice down here, it doesn't have to be whole numbers. 
Here's, we've gone across one and a half, so horizontally one and a half gets rid of here. And then vertically minus two and a half, so down two and a half. I mean, it's hard to judge on, you know, this small graph. Was that exactly halfway? Well, that's not up to us. We were told that's the point. So one and a half minus two and a half. So yeah, you can use two numbers in brackets and commas to describe any single point on that plane. Okay, take the next please. Oh, and I just note that here, they talk about ordered points or ordered coordinates. Okay, the coordinates, the, the words we use coordinates, is just, yeah, the X and the Y number. The X coordinate in this one is 3, the Y coordinate in this one is 1. And they're ordered coordinates because, as we said before, 1, 3 and 3, 1, they're different points. The order matters. It's X and then Y, horizontal and then vertical. Okay. Uh, so gradient. Now that was very quick. Okay, we can plot any point we want. But we now need to talk about the, the concept of gradient. And you're going to see there's a, there's a relationship going on. But just simple gradient. Um, first thing I'm going to go to, uh, in my youth I was a train person. And I remember a maximum sort of grade for a train line was referred to as 1 in 60. So if you imagine that, trains can't go up steep slopes. But 1 in 60, and this won't be very well to scale, imagine that's an awesome right angle triangle. 1 in 60 meant it can go up 1 for every 60 it goes across. And we call that gradient of that slope 1 in 60, or it can be written 1 60th. So that was a gradient. We say 1 watt, 60 watts. Well, it doesn't matter. If I had a 60 metre along the bottom and a 1 metre up the top, well, that's the same gradient as 60 feet and 1 foot. It doesn't matter what unit you use, as long as it's the same. 60 things one way and one of the same things up. It always gives the same gradient. In this part of the course, we don't even use units. We just would call that 60 units across and one unit up. Okay? But in real life, of course, there's metres, feet, centimetres, whatever. But as long as you're consistent, that's a gradient. So what if the gradient was much more steep? As in, I don't know about the grammar on that. Say it was uh, a gradient of a third. What would that mean? Well, it would only go, it would still only go up one, but it would only go across three. So imagine if that's one long and that's three long. This slope here is a gradient of a third, one in three. Uh, now, notice, what are we doing here? The number that goes on the top is the rise, and the number that goes on the bottom is the run. And that, that causes a lot of confusion, just because we just went to say x comes before y. In coordinate points, yeah, x comes before y. Now we're saying, for gradient put y over x, when people naturally might think x over y. Look, it's just the way gradient was defined. Gradient is equal to vertical rise over horizontal run. So it is the change in the y values over the change in x values. So we've just got to cop this one on the chin and think, when we're thinking gradient, well, it's, it's y's over x's. It's a vertical rows or a horizontal run. That's the definition. So a one-third gradient, it's getting steep. What about a gradient of one? Well, the number one is really a one over one, because one over one equals one. So if something said I've got a gradient of one, that means it goes up one, for every one it goes across. That's like a 45 degree angle, you think in that terms. That's, uh, it's as, as, that's halfway between vertical and horizontal is this diagonal slope of, um, of one. Okay, and what if we get the gradient of two? Well, two, we think of any whole number, like we just did, is two over one. So a gradient of two over one, in other words, a gradient of two means this time the vertical move is two, and the horizontal move is only one. That's really steep. So this time the vertical was two and the horizontal was one. And how do you work out the gradient? Well, it's the vertical side over the horizontal side. I'll come back to this change thing. But yes, it's, it's rise over run. If I move from, say, point A to point B, what gradient have I gone up? Well, my rise, I ended up two higher and one further across. It's a gradient of two on one. You can see down here some common gradients that this is gone across one and up two. Yeah, that's two on one. This is one on one. This is a great, this has gone up, if I draw a triangle here, it's gone up one and horizontally two, so that's why it's a half. Then you see on the right hand side, there's negative gradients. Yeah, there's such a thing as negative gradients. That just means you're going downhill instead of up. And we define this, and I'm doing this in different order, like this. 
uh, it might seem natural, again it might not. The gradient is considered positive if when you go walk along it, say, from left to right, or I've got a cyclist here, when you cycle along it from left to right, um, if you're going up, it's a positive gradient, it's uphill, it's positive. If when moving left to right you end up going downhill, well that's a negative gradient. So of you that's logical. We read from left to right, our number line goes left to right, naturally we move left to right, um, well mathematically anyway. So that's positive and negative gradients. So let's look at this negative gradient here. I'll just delete some stuff and go, well if I was on the number line and say I was at naught naught, I don't know, I don't think I addressed that on the last page, but naught naught's got to be the center point because it says I've got naught horizontally, I've got naught vertically, so it's naught naught. We also call it the origin, okay? So if, if you're talking about a line that passes through the origin, the origin always and ever just means the point naught naught, okay, the intersection of the two number lines. Now if I say I'm moving from naught naught, and I'm going to move to say 3 comma 1, well where would 3 comma 1 be? This is an x-axis, it says I've moved 1, 2, 3 horizontally, okay? And then if I move 1, well that would be 1 vertically, this would be the point, 3 comma 1, okay? And if I move from there to there, you can see my gradient is equal to, what have I done? Vertical rise, I've risen by 1. Over horizontal run, I've gone across 3. But what if I refer to the gradient 3 minus 1? Well, I've still gone positive direction of 3 horizontally. Now I've got to go minus 1. So that's this gradient. And, okay, so what's the gradient? I can still go by the exact definition. How far have I risen vertically? I haven't risen vertically. I've gone down vertically. So I can say my rise is minus 1. It might be weird to say I've risen minus 1, but what does risen minus 1 mean? It means, no, I, I went the opposite direction. I went down 1. So if you go up, it's a plus. If you go down, it's a minus. But is the denominator a minus? No. Did we move from left to right? Yes, we did. How far did we move? Three. So notice that only the top became negative. The bottom didn't become negative. And that's exactly right, because what's a minus divided by a plus? It stays a minus. So that's a gradient of minus a third. Yeah. So what if I'd said, well, no, okay, I'm going to move from here to minus three, minus one. Okay, all right, fine. One, two minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and you're going to move down to minus 1. Okay, well you're going to end up down here. So, my slope now is this. Slope gradient, same thing. I'll, I'll use them interchangeably. Gradient equals, well, in going from here to here, how far have I gone vertically? Well, I've gone up 1. Even though the number's all negative, I've gone up 1. How far have I gone horizontally? Left to right, yeah, I've gone 3. It's still a positive. Just because it went through negative numbers or these coordinates were negative, minus 3, minus 1, doesn't mean, oh, you've got to have a negative. Truth is, a negative and a negative makes a positive. But look, that line here is minus 3, sorry, is a third gradient. So is this one. Well, it's the same line, isn't it? That line just goes on through there. So yeah, it's the same gradient, it's a third. So... We're going to get towards a gradient formula, which will be provided to you in the final exam anyway. But we'll make sense of it. But first, let's finish this page. So we talked about positive gradient and negative gradient. Now we've got a zero gradient. Well, hopefully that makes sense if it's flat. It's, uh, if, if I was asked to find the gradient of this flat line, then I'd say, look, it was a number line. I'll walk from 1, from 0, 0 to 2, 0. Okay? That can be a trap too. If someone's asking you what's the coordinates of that point, it's easy to get it wrong and go 0, 2. But what have I really done? I've moved horizontally by 2. Vertically, I haven't gone up or down. No, it's not 0, 2, it's 2, 0. So if I move from here to here, what's the gradient? Well, the gradient is rise over run. Rise is nothing over run of 2. And what's the answer to the question, what's 0 divided by 2? That's like asking me, how many 2s can I get out of 0? can't get any. There's nothing wrong with the question not divided by 2. And the calc will back me up on that. Gradient's 0. There's no gradient. It's flat. 
Okay. This one's a bit iffy. An undefined gradient. Um, it would also be acceptable to call it infinity, but there's a technical there's a technicality with that. First, let's just say, why is it undefined? Well, let's just do the formula for it. Say, uh, say I moved from naught naught up to this point here. The coordinates of this point. Remember, horizontally, I've gone oop, nothing. That's the point naught two. So what have I done vertically? I've moved two. So the gradient is two over. How far do I move horizontally? Naught. That's an issue. Again, the calculator will back me up. You write 2 divided by naught, it'll tell you math error, calculator error, something like that. Why? Because it's asking how many noughts can I get out of a 2? It's like you're saying I've got $2. How many people can I give naught dollars to? And I can hand out naught dollars all day. So the answer is technically you can say it's infinity. It's also undefined. Is infinity a number? No. Nope. It's a concept of going on forever. So the reason why we call it undefined is because 2 divided by 0 is undefined. A vertical line has an undefined gradient. There's no set number I can give it. I know as my pen gets steeper and steeper and steeper, I think I've got the camera on, here it is flat, gradient of 1, 2, 10, 100, a million, a billion, a billion, trillion. But vertical line doesn't have a gradient of some huge number. Not a set number, it's infinite. It's undefined, it's not actually a number. Okay, so there's our... Clearly we won't deal with many of these undefined gradients, we're not trying to trap you there, but we will graph things later that have undefined gradients. But it won't cause issues, we'll just, we'll just know it's a vertical line. Yeah. Okay, uh, I said I'd come back to this change thing. All I mean by the change in is in moving from, say, this point here to this point here, what has the change has been? What's the change in y coordinate? My first y coordinate was a naught. My second y coordinate was a 1. Because so I moved from 0, 0 up to uh, 2, comma 1. So the change in y, it was 0, it became 2. Sorry, it was in y. I'm doing it myself, the old xy thing. My y coordinate was 0, and now my y coordinate is 1. So what's the change in y? 1. My x coordinate was 0, my new x coordinate is 2. So what's my change there? Yeah, okay, so change just means. It's what it's the new minus the old. I was effectively, I was saying, say I called that point one x one y one and point two x two y two. So this was labelled point one. This is labelled point two. I said that the gradient was equal to the new y value minus the old y value. Well, that worked out what the change in y was over the new x value, which is x two minus the old x value which is x naught. This is our formula. I've jumped ahead a bit, but that's a formula that's coming up to define what is our gradient. And we can say that gradient is y2 minus y1 of x2 minus x1, because that just means new y value minus old y value. That's the change in y. This means new x value minus old x value. That's change in x. Hopefully there's some nice common sense there. And why are the y's on top and the x's on bottom? Well, that's what we said from the start. The difference in the y's is our vertical rise. The difference in the x's is a horizontal run. Which again, this is that's what gradient is. I'm not sure now whether that formula occurs in this week or next week. Page down. Let me just go ahead a bit. Because I think it Oh no, good, 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 good boy. It is in this week. So ignore that formula for the moment, we're about to come back to it. So here's a an example. A straight line joins the two points A and B. Notice that I've drawn this line going on forever. Okay, technically the question just says, it's just talking about the line between A and B, but it can be a line that goes on forever in both directions, but its gradient is consistent. It doesn't matter where you stand on this line. If you walk from left to right, it's the same gradient. It's the same steepness. And we can see that, all right, if gradient is defined as vertical rise, I used to be here, I'm now here. Vertically, I used to be at two, now I'm at three. Clearly I've gone up one, a positive one. Clearly horizontally, I was here, and now I'm here. I was at one, and now I'm at four. So I've moved across three. And again, I'm gonna look at that formula that I scribbled on the last page. Grand. That's also gonna appear on the next page. What did I do? I said, well, the new y coordinate is three. The old y coordinate was two. I said three minus two. 
the new x coordinate is 4, the old x coordinate was 1. Same thing. Okay, so the formula that's coming up that just says the second y value minus the first y value, y2 minus y1, over the second x value minus the second y value, second minus the first y, <laughs> minus the first x value. Okay, that's the formula that's coming. Give me the change in y's over the change in the x's. The graph down here, well, now it's going downhill. So automatically I know that I have stuffed up if I do not get a negative answer for the gradient. Just look at it. I'm walking from left to right. Here's me. Oh, wow. Um, and I'm walking from left to right. What's happening? I'm going downhill. I know my gradient is minus. But let's see it happen anyway. If I walk from point A to point B, what have I done horizontally? Well, this triangle, I always draw a triangle on these things. It really helps me. If I draw the triangle, my vertical rise was not a rise. I went down 5, not up 5, hence my vertical rise is a minus 5. My horizontal run is still a positive. Since I always read it left to right, I'm going to get a positive. And it's only positive 2 spots. So the top is minus 5, the bottom is 2. We know that a minus 5 by plus stays minus. So whether I call it minus 5 on 2, the improper fraction, or whether I convert it to minus 2.5, the proper fraction, sorry, the mixed fraction, um, it's the same answer. Minus 5 on 2, minus 2.5. Call it uh, a gradient of minus 2.5 if you want. Um, they're all the same answer. All right? So it doesn't matter. There's no preference for fractions just because I've used them. Okay. Uh, give us another one. Okay, now this sketch is just making sense, I hope, of this gradient formula. And like I said before, this formula will be given to you in the final exam. Um, and it, apart from the final exam, well, you'll have it near you. I'd always do summary sheets and just have that formula near you for the quizzes and assignments and so on. So, what's it saying? Well, exactly what we've done. Now, first I should address this. Suddenly I called it M. Uh, that's the letter that's been given a gradient. Okay? The little letter G was taken by physics as gravity. Okay? The acceleration due to gravity. Big G, I think, is uh, it's a gravitational constant. Uh, but anyway, G wasn't available, and I haven't been able to find out whether M was some Greek word for gradient. Or, anyway, M is gradient. M is gradient. I don't know how to... I haven't come up with a, a good way to remember that, but M is gradient. Hmm. Tell me if you think of one. Okay, so this formula tells me... All right, well, let's let's just draw one. Let's, I'll go over this next question, and I'll do it... It's already done here, but I'll do it with a picture. The point 4, comma, minus 1, and I'm not going to do an accurate picture, I'm just going to do a sketch. 4 minus 1, if there's x axis this way and y axis, would be coming across 4 and going down minus 1. I'm just going to go 4, comma, minus 1. My other point is minus 8, comma, 2. It's not the scale, but I'll try and be roughly right. Here's minus 8, say, and here's 2. Alright, it's around there. There's minus 8, comma, 2. Okay, rough sketch. And the gradient we're talking about is there. So we're going from this point to this point. Now, um, since I've drawn the sketch, I can just draw my triangle and do it manually. But let's see the formula do it for us. And firstly, now it doesn't matter which one I call point one or which one I call point two. For this example, I've let the this point be point one and this point be point two. Did I change color? Uh, I just want to do. Cheer up a bit. Um, so, first thing I like to do here is just say, well, you're an x value and you're a y value. You're an x value and you're a y value. If I'm going to call you point 0.1, you can be x1, y1. If you're point 0.2, then you can be x2, y2. I promise you I'd get the exact same answer if I defined the left point as 1 and the right as 2. It just, we'll, we'll show you in a sec. So let's just look at the formula. The battery's running low. I'll just plug you in then. Okay. Um, okay, so the formula says get y2 and subtract y1. Okay, y2 is 2 and subtract y1. Same as sem 1, when I uh, substitute a negative in to an algebraic expression, I'll put brackets around it. Just, I just, It helps me see that this, the formula had a minus in it and the number was also minus, so it was this 2 minus minus 1. 
on the bottom it's x2 minus x1, so it's minus 8 minus an x1 to 4. Okay, so that's 2 minus minus 1, well that's 2 plus 1, that's a 3. Minus 8 minus 4, 8 steps back and 4 steps back, that's minus 12. A plus divided by minus is a minus, and 3 twelfths comes down to a quarter when either I use the calculator to simplify it or I say look there's one three there and four threes there. So we've answered it, the gradient is minus a quarter. Uh, what if I swap those numbers around? What if in a different colour, it's really good into it now, and I went for, I don't know, purple. Um, I'm going to call u.1 and u.2. So now your x2, y2 and your x1, y1. Alright. This time it would be y2 minus y1, so it would be minus 1 minus 2 over x2 is 4 minus x1 is minus 8. That would be minus 1 minus 2 is minus 3. 4 minus minus 8 is 4 plus 8 is 12. The minus is in a different spot, but it's still a minus answer, and 3 twelfths is still a... Yeah, it just doesn't matter. And the other thing, of course, is maybe I don't like formulas. Oh, I don't like formulas, but I do like sketches. And if I just wanted to do it manually, I said, well, it is a 2 and it ended up down to minus 1. How many steps between 2 and minus 1? 1, 2, 3. Yep. How many steps between minus 8 and 4? Well, there's eight steps to there and four more. My gradient, manually, firstly, is it plus or minus? Clearly it's minus. Here's me walking down it. And vertically it's three. Because, yeah, it went downhill three over 12. Yeah, it's minus a quarter. So there's well, three methods, really, where they've come up with the same thing. The formula's great. I don't even really think of the formula. I, I just think... 1y minus the other y over 1x minus the other x. As long as you do them the same, like um, this minus this and this minus this. Don't do this minus this and then suddenly swap the order. Look, if you remain consistent with it, one of the points is 1, one of the points is 2. It works for us every single time. Um, so I've got that example. And then for the previous examples, we could have done... Oh, so this is just the ones we did manually before where we just uh, added them up. Uh, the boxes that we jumped and stuff. So the beauty of using the formula is you don't have to sketch it and it will tell you whether it's plus or minus. Like this one here, I swear to you, the main incorrect answer people will get for this in a sketch, they'll say, oh, let's count the boxes, one, two, three, four, five, and one, two. So the gradient is five on two. But what have we missed? It's negative. My gradient is negative five on two. All right, I can't just call it 5 and 2, it's clearly going downhill. Okay, the beauty of the formula is, well, it tells you it's negative. You don't even have to sketch it, you don't have to look at it. We just said, in this case, you can see I've called this point 2 and this point 1. So I said this y minus this y, which is minus 1 minus 4, over this x, 1 minus this x, 1 minus minus 1, minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5, 1 minus minus 1 is a 2, Minus 5 on 2. Okay, so the formula is handy. So now, assume we've got some exercises, label the points, um, and like with this one, just, you know, we're just being simple with it. Consider that halfway. Okay, um, just to tuck one in, I just want to say, like this point here, it's got to be bracketed, I know it's comma, it's crawl before you can climb. Or horizontal then vertical. It's 2 comma 3. All right, and then with the grains, the next ones in 1.2. Well, you can do whichever way, but these ones are intended for you to just use. Do it this way. You make a decision: are you plus or are you minus? And then you do a vertical rise over horizontal run. So, for example, if I pick this one, I'll say instantly the grain is negative. I can see that it's negative. It's going downhill. Left to right, it's going downhill. Then I'll try and find some points where it, I can accurately read it. I can't accurately read some of these points or that one. Yeah. That one looks alright. Oh, that one. That'll do. There's a point. I can see it going through the actual light grey lines. And there's one. That'll do. I could use those points and put them in the formula. Or I could draw a triangle here. And say, well, one, two, three, four verticals in this triangle. 
oops, don't use loads of fraction sign, that's a negative. Over horizontally, how far to go? One, two, three, four, five, six. The gradient of that line is minus four sixths. That's not incorrect, but let's simplify fractions. It's still right, but find the gradient of the following lines. Two on three is the better answer, because there was two twos there and three twos there. Yeah, minus two thirds. And so that, what does that mean literally? It means, I can think of that as like a minus two over a three. It means for every two I go down, I go across three. Let's check that. For every two I go down, I go across three. True. For every two I go down, I go across three. Yeah. My next point would have been two down, three across. Two down, three across. Two down, three across. We've probably got the point. And the next exercise is talking about, um, yeah. You can sketch them if you want to confirm. Um, so yeah, we've got we've got all sorts of different ones there. So anyway, um, I hope that's a good intro, and welcome to week one. All right, see ya.